It was a cold morning that day on Chicago's north side when seven men were lined up against a brick wall and pumped full of lead from submachine guns. Gang warfare ruled the streets of Chicago during Prohibition, especially the late 1920s. And it was Chief Crime Lord Al Capone, or should we call him Snorky? <laughs> that was one of his many nicknames, Snorky, due to his snappy dress sense. Yeah, cha-cha. <laughs> or perhaps a better known nickname he went by was Scarface, which he uh, received after being attacked in a New York nightclub. Anyway, Snorky Scarface, no. <laughs> Al Capone sought to eliminate his rivals. You see, there was a lot of money to be had in the illegal trades of bootlegging, gambling, speakeasies, and prostitution. And Al Capone, he wanted it all, and usually got it all with brute force by ruthless elimination. He had an impressive income, too, from all those activities. Ah, oh, that's a lot of money, man. Capone had become the country's most notorious gangster, and the newspapers dubbed him as public enemy number one. One time back in Chicago in 1926, he had four of his henchmen kidnap Fats Waller. Now, if you don't know who Fats Waller was, he was an awesome piano player during that time. Uh, they kidnapped Fats and drove him to the Hawthorne Inn, which was owned by Al Capone. Well, Fats soon found out he was the surprise entertainment for Capone's birthday party. <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, you're just walking down the street whistling that new tune that you, you just composed. Whoa! <laughs> and you're just like <laughs> dragged into a car and, huh, oh, I'm gigging tonight? Okay. <laughs> Al Capone's biggest rival was Irish gangster George Bugs Moran. He ran his bootlegging operation out of a garage at 2122 North Clark Street in Chicago. On February 14th, Valentine's Day, 1929, the hit was on. At about 10.30 a.m., four men burst into the SMC Cartage Company garage. Now, two of the men were dressed as police officers. The other two wore suits, overcoats, and hats, announcing, This is a raid! <laughs> they ordered the seven members of Moran's gang to face the wall and opened fire. They gunned him down in cold blood with some 70 rounds of ammunition. Witnesses watched as the gunmen sped off in a black Cadillac that looked like a police car of the day, complete with rifle rack and sirens. Left dead in a pool of blood was Albert Kachalik, alias James Clark, Moran's second in command, Adam Hayer, the bookkeeper and business manager of the Moran gang. Dr. Reinhard Schwimmer. He was an optician who left his practice to gamble on horse racing and just uh, hung out with the gang. Albert Weinshank, who managed several cleaning and dyeing operations for Moran. John May, a car mechanic for the Moran gang. Peter Gusenberg, AKA Goosey, <laughs> a frontline enforcer for the Moran organizations. And his brother Frank Gusenberg, also an enforcer. He was the only one barely alive when the real police, the officers from Chicago's 36th district arrived. In a few minutes before he died, they, they pressed him to tell him what had happened, but Gusenberg wouldn't talk. Kind of a code of honor not to squeal. Missing that morning was Capone's big prize, Bugs Moran. He was on his way to the garage and missed getting killed by minutes because, well, he slept in. <laughs> Good day to sleep in. He told reporters a few days later, only Capone kills like that. And Capone, he was at his home in Florida at the time. He commented on the murder saying, the only man who kills like that is Bugs Moran. No one was ever brought to trial for the murders in the Clark Street garage on that cold, bloody Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Let's make a prohibition style cocktail I call Capone's Kiss. Yeah. Thank you. 
Templeton rye became El Capone's drink of choice. And when they sent him up to Alcatraz, you know, a few bottles actually made their way inside. Today I'm using a 40 Creek Copper Pot Reserve. It's 43% alcohol by volume, and I think it'll be perfect in this drink. Yeah. And what we want is uh, two ounces. Another reason I'm using Canadian whiskey is back during Prohibition, a lot of Canadian whiskey was being smuggled into cities like Chicago, New York, all over the US. Followed by Aperol. You know, I like the orange and mandarin flavors along with the, the bitter sweetness uh, that Aperol offers, along with the, the herbs too. And we want one ounce. Now, fresh pressed lemon juice. I've got a fresh lemon here. And we want a half an ounce. That's about right, right there. And I made this special simple syrup, a thyme infused simple syrup, um, just for this cocktail. We want a half an ounce. Grab some ice. And shake it. <laughs> shake it like uh, you're getting blasted by Al Capone. No. <laughs> Just shake it. Shake it good, shake it hard. Perfect. Just uh, swap out our shaker tin with a nice little rock glass there. Add a uh, single cube to our drink and double strain into our rock glass. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And we're gonna top it up with some chocolate bitters. It is Valentine's Day after all anyway, and what would a Valentine's Day be without chocolate? Four dashes, yeah, and one dash of orange bitters. Garnish, well, I'm thinking <laughs> a blood orange. Yeah, let me just carve off a little wedge here. Drop her in our drink, beauty. Let's give it a go. Oh, geez, chocolate and orange right off the bat. Oh, baby. Just be forewarned, this is not your typical creamy uh, Valentine's Day drink. This is a bright, spirit-forward cocktail uh, with a lemony chocolate finish. Absolutely delightful. <laughs> Make one, or I'll come over and kill you. No, <laughs> I won't say that. Partial funding for Bar Talk and Cocktails is provided by Patreon. For just a few dollars a month, you get access to lots of extra stuff. Behind the scenes videos, podcasts, newsletters, some of my own personally created cocktails, and much, much more. Become one of my patrons today and help keep us going. Thanks in advance. Cheers. Ah, make this drink, see? Ha. <laughs> Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> You know, if you want to get fancy too, you can just drop in a little time sprig. Hit the subscribe button, check some other videos out, and make Capone's kiss before somebody kills you.
<laughs> Happy Valentine's Day!